Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of Unscripted Faith. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert alongside Angela Madden. Good to be with you today and so glad that you all have invited us into your homes. You know, today, one year ago today, October 7th, Israel was attacked and we are gonna be talking about that. We've got Pastors Buck and Amy here with us, and we got an Ask Amy segment talking about should Christians vote? It's gonna be great. Oh, I think it's gonna be real good. She's gonna give us good insight. Today marks exactly one year since the devastating attack on Israel. Recently, Jay and I had the privilege of speaking with Jonathan Kahn, and he had some incredible things to say about Israel, including what the Bible has to say about end time prophecy. Take a look. I am so excited because we have the New York Times best-selling author Jonathan Kahn as our next guest, guest, and he has been named as one of the top spiritual leaders to have radically impacted our world in modern times. His newest book, The Dragon's Prophecy, may be his most important one yet as he reveals the shocking truth of what's happening in our world and the ancient prophecies and forces that reveal where it's all heading. Rabbi Jonathan, it is a privilege to have you with us here on Unscripted Faith. Great to be with you, always. We are here October 7th, one year from the date of the horrible atrocities that happened over in Israel. You as a Jewish rabbi, how has it impacted you personally? And what are your personal thoughts about what has happened a year ago? Well, it was on, on one hand, of course, shocking. Um, on the other hand, it was something the Bible speaks about. You know, the Bible says that there's a war uh, going on and uh, the war is actually 4,000 years old. And the Bible speaks about the enemy. And, uh, you know, then this is the, the fallen angelic being we call Satan that, that seeks to destroy the, the works of God. And then you have Israel, the Jewish people who were brought into the world to bring forth the works of God. So you're going to have a war. And this war has been going on again for ages. You know, it, it just, the names change and the people rise and fall. And so this was all part of it, you know, on, on one hand. You know, on the other hand, you know, so it, it's shocking on one, on one sense, but on the other sense, it is what the Bible says. You know, the Bible even gives a, gives a, um, a vision in Revelation of a dragon, uh, which is representing the enemy, and he attacks a woman representing Israel. And it's about the war that Revelation told us all about that war. And it was after this happened that, the, you know, I was, gonna, I was getting ready to write another book, the sequel to the return of the gods. And the Lord just really interrupted me uh, with everything that happened. And I, I'm praying and I see a dragon and I know that this is from Revelation. And that, that's what began the dragon's prophecy, the, the book that just, has just come out. Um, but it was really birthed from all these things. So, of course, we pray for Israel. Of course, you know, we also um, uh, have given, you know, massive amounts of aid to help them there. Um, but the other thing about this is, Jay and Angela, is that um, the, it was on, I get, on a Friday night in the congregation I lead here in New Jersey called Beth Israel. And I was led to share a, bibli a particular biblical mystery that night. But the mystery ordained that there would be an attack on Israel... It would take place in the year 2023. According to the mystery, it would happen in the month of October. It would happen on, the, on a Saturday, a Sabbath day. It wow. would take place on a Hebrew holy day. Altogether, it would happen on the first Saturday of October of 2023. The next morning it happened. So I just shared that mystery, and then it happened. And this is one of the mysteries that the Lord led me to open up that may even enable us to know events that are going to come and exactly when they will happen because God is in control. So this was also part of the origins of the dragon's prophecy from this very event. Where in the scripture is the ancient prophecy that you're talking about? Yeah, it's not, it's not a prophecy. It's a mystery. And it's the mystery comes from, from the uh, book of Leviticus, which is... Uh, which speaks of the jubilee, and that every 50 years, there, you know, there, there certain things happen, and there's so much to this. Um, but I'll just for time's sake, um, I will, I will just give you a, a you know, a little a taste of it um, that I can't hear, and that is that, um, you know, in 1973, it was really the the worst calamity that ever took place in Israel's history as a Israel as a nation happened. It was called the Yom Kippur War. It, it almost destroyed, almost, it almost led to the destruction of Israel. And they were caught by surprise. It was a ground invasion 
Um, and uh, they miraculously turned it around, but it shook Israel to this day. And the thing, it was the worst thing since what just now happened on October 7th. The thing is, what happened, so it happened, a ground invasion. So now, uh, now I, I speak in the, in the book, in the Dragon's Prophecy, that the enemy is a mimic. He's an imitator. He imitates the things of God. God plans a jubilee, which is a, a great thing, but he twists it around for destruction. So the jubilee, 50th year of that event, would be, this is 1973, it takes you to 2023. Wow. It was wow. an invasion, a ground invasion, so there's going to be a ground invasion in 2023. The Yom Kippur War took place in the month of October. So it's going to take place in the month of October. It, the Yom Kippur War invasion took place on a Saturday. So it's going to take place on a Saturday, wow. on a Sabbath. The, the Yom Kippur invasion took place, it was an invasion that took place on a Hebrew holy day that goes back to Leviticus 23. So, so October 7th took place on a Hebrew holy day that went back to Leviticus 23. And so altogether, the, the Yom Kippur War took place on the first Saturday of October of, 20, of 1973, that pinpoints the first Saturday of October 2023. I mean, there's so much to this. And, and again, this is one of the mysteries in the book that may even enable us to know what is going to happen. Because when I finished writing the manuscript, three other events happened according to this mystery. So this thing is continuing. Mm. Wow. I mean, that is powerful, yeah, that that is. mystery wow. being revealed in Leviticus. How is the Hamas invasion connected to the book of Revelation? Well, in the book of Revelation, it says that the dragon, it, you know, this is the enemy, the way he fights against the woman or the Jewish people, Israel. It says he spews a flood, you know, to overwhelm her, to sweep her away. Flood. That's the key thing there. Well, you know, the invasion of October 7th, Hamas had a name for it. They, they, they have a code name. They called it Operation Tufan. Tufan is the Arabic word for the flood. So it was the dragon's flood wow. on October 7th. Wow. I have a, I, I have a real big question here. Uh, what's coming next then? I mean, because obviously the mysteries you always share, they are always leading to other things. Uh, now that we know Hamas is invaded, uh, we know it's been a year now since uh, that's all taken place. We know it's leading up to war. What do you believe through the mystery is the next thing we should be praying about or is going to happen in the earth? Yeah, well, one of the things, the, the subtitle of the Dragon's Prophecy is Israel, the Dark Resurrection, which is a whole other mystery, and the end of days. This was so much linked to the end of days. Now, we're not setting dates, but the Bible says a few things. One is, in the Bible, it foretells an invasion of Israel by a whole uh, mass alliance of nations. And the amazing thing about it is that the, the nations that we can identify, uh, all of them, each of them, actually, from Ezekiel, had a part in October 7th. This is the first time they, ever, they were behind it, actually, with, behind Hamas. First time, including Iran, as mentioned. The first time that these nations ever had took part altogether in an invasion of Israel. It's still going to come, but this is moving it forward. Also, Ezekiel says that Iran, or, you know, it, it Persia, Iran, is going to attack Israel. Well, that's never happened directly, and it's still going to happen. But this year, after all, all these things, Iran actually attacked Israel for the first time directly ever in history. So things are moving ahead. The other thing the Bible says is in the last days, you know, you'll know you're in the last days when the nation of Israel is back in the world, has come back, when the nations are focusing on Israel, and when there's, there's all sorts of conflict over Israel, and there's war over Israel. Well, we're all in that. You can check, yeah. check the boxes. We're there. But one of the things it says is that in the last days, all nations will come against Israel in the end. And the thing is, the amazing thing, it wasn't just what happened October 7th. It led to this mass eruption of anti-Israel, anti-Jewish hatred throughout the world, even in America. It was the, it was the most widespread uh, eruption of this hate. This is the dragon. You know, this is the enemy's hate. But it, it, in history. And so this is moving us, everything is moving us ahead to that day of the Bible speaks, all these things linked together. So we are we are accelerating in the, the timetable of what the Bible gives of the last days. Knowing that this is ahead of us, and truly it has been eye-opening to see that some of these things could transpire here in the US. But like you said, these mysteries, I mean, these are promises. So how as believers can we be prepared and stand in these moments? 
That's a great question. Well, the la yeah, the, actually, the last part of the book is all about that, is how to be ready. Because, you know, the Bible says the, the dragon or the enemy wars against Israel, but it says he also wars against the rest of her children. Yeah. Who are the rest of our children? It's us. <laughs> the, the people, if you're born again, if you're a believer, you are linked, you are a child of Israel. So it's about us, too. In the last days, that this will, get, this will even intensify. Uh, one of the things I speak about is that, you know, the Bible says we do have victory. You've got to remember that. Uh, it says they overcame the dragon by the blood of the Lamb. We do have victory. The Lamb wins. And so we have to fight. One thing is we cannot just stand and, and just watch everything go to hell. We are here to fight uh, spiritually the good fight and know that no matter what's happening, because the enemy wars against all of us, we have victory. But you only have victory if you stand and fight the power of the Lamb. In the end, the dragon does not win in Revelation. The Lamb wins. And those who follow the Lamb with all their heart, they're going to win. Amen. Amen. Well, Rabbi, I know everybody's going to want to get their hands on this book. Tell us how, where we can get it. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like that. The Dragon's Prophecy just came out. It's all over wherever you get books, from Amazon to uh, online to uh, Christian, secular. Walmart has it. It's everywhere. I pray people get it not just for themselves, but for people in their life who need to know what's coming. Amen. Well, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, it's always a pleasure to have you. You do such a great job. We are so thankful for your ministry and for you taking the time to spend with us here on Unscripted Faith. Thank you. It was, it was a joy. Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, stay with us. There's a whole lot more coming up here on Unscripted Faith. I'm Ask Amy. Welcome to this segment where you write in, ask questions, and we look to God's word and his truth for all of the answers. I love today's question. Uh, have you ever been called a Christian nationalist? Do you love God and love your country and your nation? Are you a Christian that believes that if you take Christ out of government, that you are left to yourself and that's not a good thing, that if you to take God out, you're gonna fall on your face. Did you know that there are 40 to 50 million Christians that won't vote? Evangelical Christians. And at the top of those are veterans and hunters that will not vote. That is shocking to me. There are 15 million Christians that are not even registered to vote. Oh man, there is a lack of unity in the body of Christ. We are, remember, one nation under God, and God moves when his people are united. In the same way, the kingdom of darkness, Satan moves when his people are united, and a house divided against itself cannot stand. So today's question is, does my vote matter? Why should Christians be involved in the elections? Thank you for asking. I mean, I want, I want to lay out a few thoughts for you to start. Number one, there are two kingdoms at play here. There's the kingdom of heaven and there's the kingdom of earth. We live here. He lives there. He's running there, but he said, listen, I've given you authority and power and dominion on this kingdom of earth. So you have to take your dominion. You can't put your head in the sand. You can't have your head in the clouds. You've got to live here on earth and bring heaven to earth in every sphere of influence. Number two, it's important to remember that you are God's elect and that you have authority on earth. Jesus said, hey, I'm going to the Father and I'm gonna be sitting there until it's time for me to come back. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the power and the authority. I'm gonna give you the kings to the kingdom here on earth. So right here where we walk around, we have God's hand on our life. We are the elect of God and we have authority and dominion. That's why Christians should get up and they should vote and be a part of the election. Number three, very, very important. You are a watchman on the wall. What does that mean? You are praying, you are acting, you are voting, you are aware, you are a builder of church, you're a builder of family, you're a builder of the community, you are God's remnant on the earth. Here's a few scriptures to back what I'm saying. Number one, Psalm 115, 16 said, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has been given to the children of men. Now think about it. The heavens are the Lord's, right? 
and he's there. But the earth I've given to the children of men. So what are you doing with what he has given you? Revelation 1, 6 says to him who loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood. He has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power and the dominion forever and ever. You are both a king and a priest. That means you're walking in natural government authority and you're watching a natural spiritual authority. We don't live in heaven right now. We live right here on earth. And this is where we're to take our authority. You're a king and a priest. And number three, scripture, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, you are, this is crazy, a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood and a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Now, I hope you get that. You are a royal priesthood and you're a holy nation. So what are you doing here on this nation that we live in, that we work in, that we raise our families in, that we are going to schools in? You see, we are voting or electing someone that will change policies and pass laws that will affect our lives and the lives of our churches. I mean, we are one step away from that is hate speech when you're talking about the Bible and Christianity, and we're going to shut you off and shut you down. We're talking about religious liberties. We're talking about freedom of speech. We're talking about being pro-life or pro-choice or open borders or immigration or Israel, taxes, the economy, the transgender operations that are happening to our children, the drilling, the health care, the food supply change, and the list goes on and on. How can you not get involved in the election? Why would you not get involved and use your God-given authority here on earth to make decisions that will affect the lives of your families and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a great time to educate, motivate, organize, mobilize, register, and get out and vote and be involved in the election process. What a great country we live in and what an honor and a privilege it is to use our voice. So just in closing, in the words of my sweet, sweet mother, she said this to me the other day, Amy, you've got to show up or shut up. That's Ask Amy, write in your questions. <laughs> Make sure you show up or shut up in this election season. And I pray that you do show up. Will you email us? Will you ask us questions? Will you call in? We can't wait to hear from you. See you next week. Well, y'all heard it right here. You better show up or shut up. And guess what? She done showed up to back up whatever she shared in that moment right there. So I am so excited to have with us today. Uh, they really need no introduction. They have been movers and shakers here in the Pittsburgh area since 1997. They are taking ground. They are innovators. They are here on television. I started everything off with Pastor Amy, and we are so honored to have the Pastors of Grace Life Church here with us to share about what's going on in their heart for Israel. Pastors Buck and Amy Schaefer, good to have you all on Unscripted Faith. Hi, good to be here. Great to be here. Y'all are movers and shakers, and so <laughs> since y'all done showed up, mm -hmm. it's time to shut the devil up about all this stuff that's going on uh, with Israel. And I know that's yeah. very near and dear to you guys' hearts along with many other uh, controversial topics. But mm -hmm. tell us a little bit of why it's so important to you guys and why the churches support Israel. Go ahead, dear. Well, I mean, I, I think it is our clarion call as believers. I can't imagine a believer not supporting Israel. This is where our Bible comes from. This is where the men and women of faith come from. This is where Jesus was. This is the covenant that God made with Abraham on the earth. And I think about, you know, people that have this fantasy of peace, just this, it's like some glorified vision of peace on earth. And Ecclesiastes says there is a time for war. And now is a time for war right. when an evil terrorist group invades the land of Israel 
1,200 are murdered. Hundreds are captured. There are still a hundred or so in captivity if they're even still alive today. So for us as Christians to bury our heads in the sand, act right. like it's not going on, act like it's not important, act like it's not relevant to what's happening in the world or to us is really ignorant. And we have to gain some knowledge and understanding yes. on the topic. I think part of the, re part of the reason we really love Israel is you know, for years it came to me, even as a kid and a teenager, and then going on missions at a young age, seeing a love for the Jewish people. But there's a thing called replacement theology. Right. And I think most of the church has bought into this lie. Oh, we're the new Israel, it's all good. But if you look at Paul's writings in Romans 11, for if the temporary rejection released reconciled power of grace into the world, what will happen when Israel's reinstated and reconciled to God? It will unleash resurrection power throughout the earth. Well, when you start reading these scriptures and then you say that we're the wild olive branch that was grafted in, and then Paul tells us it's not just about the branch, but it's about the root. And then he says in Romans 11, you owe your life to the root. Yes. So when I started meditating on that and speaking in different Jewish places and having some rabbi friends, they just said to me, how come you love Israel so much? And I think if you're a believer, it's kind of one and the same, the church in Israel. What's being attacked right now? Israel, the little Satan, America, the great Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan is anti-Christ. He hates that Jesus came out of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. came out of Israel, came out of Bethlehem of Judea. He hates that the gospel's being preached throughout the whole world. If believers don't come to that, we were in a, in a Shabbat dinner and, and the guy said, we're blessed tonight because we have such great Zionists, Zionists here. I said, that's mm -hmm. the first time I was like, what do you we're mean? Like, he said, you guys love yeah. Israel. Wow. That's awesome. And I think that's so important because we do, we love Israel and God is going to reinstate them and we're going to see a massive awakening and the blinders are going to come off their eyes. What the devil meant for evil in this October 7th, one year, it's going to turn for the good. Wow. Why do you think it's so important uh, to vote in this day and age. How do you think our vote will impact the world and Israel and everything that's happening? I believe if you w vote one direction, someone's thought process in a different mindset would be, like someone said, in two years, Israel could be wiped off the planet. Yeah. And so we don't, we don't look at this party issue, we look at biblical values. Who will support Amen. Israel Amen. the most? That's who we have to back because there's a covenant with Israel. God told Abraham, uh, Genesis 17, I will bless you, make you a blessing. I will have an eternal covenant with you. So those people are going to have that land to Canaan all the way down where the Palestinians were. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a biblical covenant with the dirt that has to happen. So people say, you know, Iran attacked the other day. Hundreds of rockets coming in. Our friends are calling us, texting us, showing us pictures. Kids are hiding, crying, bombs are exploding. And it's like, hey man, nothing really did anything. Like it's not just the Iron Dome or David's sling, it's God fighting for Israel. Right. It's powerful Amen. to be alive in these days. Amen. 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 Now we were getting to talk just a few minutes ago before this, and you were talking about how a lot of people actually are kind of deceived to believing that once this election happens, <laughs> oh, it's free sailing. Speak to us, prepare us. Oh yeah. I mean, they say, oh, once this election happens, we're good. Thank God it'll oh, be man. over with. And I would say to that person, are you kidding? Like we're just yeah. beginning. That's right. Things will be set in motion, whether good or evil, agendas, um, assignments, whether righteous assignments or demonic assignments. And uh, for me, Israel is one of those top three issues that without I will be voting on Amen. without a doubt, without a question. Um, what would you say to that? Um, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. There's a bunch. Well, let me ask you this Go question, ahead. though, with uh, Hamas. Because there's a lot of people talking, I'd love to get your perspective on this. Kind of controversial, but sure. a lot of people talk about, well, you know, pro Israel, pro Israel. And you got the people talking about pro Hamas. We got to protect sure. Hamas. Sure. We got to protect Hamas. But they invaded Israel. So to that, you say what? I would say, you know, it, we have compassion. We're Christians. We love Jesus and we love people. And we want all to come to the knowledge of Christ. That's right. 40,000 people, Palestinians, have been murdered. It, it, no one's celebrating that. But when someone else makes a commitment that they say, Netanyahu's crazy because he wants to do this, 
they want to wipe Israel off the planet That's from right. the river to the sea. We want you no more. Mm -hmm. This is a demonic thing, not over the land only, but the people. That's right. So you, you talk, well, they're creating genocide with, with the Palestinians. Hold up for a minute. Wicked groups were celebrating when terrorism took place. They were calling their moms and they were saying, we just killed 10 Jews. Wow. And, and wow. Allah Praise Allah. And they were celebrating how they killed them. What this is demonic. This is a demonic is. situation that it's 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 a last day scenario. And that's with that other question. This is last day. Some reporters were in our church said, I can't believe what you said this Sunday. And I, I forget even what I said, but I said something to this effect. I said, when the election happens, I don't care if it goes left or goes right, chaos is going to break out no matter what. Yeah. These are last days. Right. God has a covenant with Israel. He's going to fight for them. Everybody's coming against Israel right now. That's the hotbed in the Middle East. There's 45 wars going on right now. But why? Tell, tell us why is Israel the hotbed? Why is there so much war going on in Israel in regards to the last days? Well, there's, a, there's an ancient covenant there. And, and, and I believe Israel, when, when 1947 took place, and you could go over the history, the beginning of the Jews coming home was just where Jesus said in Matthew 25, this is the beginning of the end. When That's Israel right. comes back to be a nation, it's escalating. And now it's, it's just guaranteed to happen. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, Rabbi Daniel Lappin, who's a yes. friend of ours here at Cornerstone, he texts this to Buck and I when we were in Jerusalem. He said, I'm so glad to hear that you're in Jerusalem. Uh, it fascinates me to, that it is the only major capital city in the world that is neither on an ocean or river nor on any ancient trade route. Mm. It literally had no materialistic reason to exist, only spiritual. He said it's also the latitude and longitude lines that cross more landmass versus ocean on the globe than any other, almost like the center of, of the, the earth. earth. It is. It wow. is a Indeed. spiritual matter. It is a spiritual wow. war. It is a spiritual battle. And yes. we as believers of anybody should be yes. in tune to this battle and should be the watchman on the wall praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Well, speaker, can you take 30 seconds yes. and just pray for Israel? Yes. this time. Yes. Father, we thank you. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for every Jewish person. We thank you, Father God, that their eyes are being opened to the truth of what's really going on here. Yes. This hatred toward them, this seed of woman, Father God, that, that is in the earth that will crush Satan's head. We believe it, Father God. Your glory as you said, darkness will cover the earth, but your glory shall yes. be revealed, yes. Father God. Yes. So we thank you for Israel now. We ask you to pray for its peace and protection yes. and yes. prosperity. Thank we you. ask you that in America, we would align our yes. votes and our thoughts and our mindsets with the Jewish people that is biblical and scriptural, Father yes. God. We stand with Israel because those who yes. bless Israel will yes. be blessed. Yes. And I encourage every person to get out and vote and stand for Israel in this hour, in their great hour of yes. a need. Let's stand along Inside them and be the nation that God's asked us to be Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Buck. Y'all heard it. You got to show up in Jesus' name. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.